Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Not Too Comic Book. This week is show we're talking about TV shows that are adaptations of comic books. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of Resident Alien. A great episode, a lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. Well, first and foremost, we are immediately picking up where the last episode left off, and... Uh, now it's like, oh my god, what do we do? Mike is on his way, so our trio of Harry, Asta, and Darcy cover up the crime scene. It's like, oh, let's let's not uh, get anyone involved, because if we get people involved, then the police find, discover the body, then everyone associated with this guy from the uh, Gavin Powell group will also find out, eventually tie it back to her, and it's like, oh, you killed our friend, so... Plus her connections to Sam, that probably also probably wouldn't work in their favor either, but yeah. Um, either way, they covered that up, and I love how Darcy is so quick, like she's just kind of like, alright, let, let, let's do this, do that, do that, and she learned all this stuff from like C C um, CSI, which I love that, once again, it's like, because immediately, um, Harry knows because of, he's like, oh, Law and Order, and she's like, CSI, he's like, wait, does CSI have the don't don't? Uh, he's like, no, they don't. Uh, but still, because I was thinking it was so weird, I'm like, for one, Darcy's so okay with this, and she's so readily prepared, but I'm like, well, to be fair, there's enough crime dramas out there, police procedurals, to kind of arm people with some rudimentary knowledge of crime scenes and stuff, uh, Still, she was kind of on top of it all, and even Asa was kind of shocked by it. But to be fair, she's extra motivated. She, Her best friend, as she says, my soul sister is in trouble. I'm not, you know, self-defense, he was going to kill Harry, and now they know that, like, oh, wait, well, they put everything on him killing Sam. To be fair, it was obviously the real Harry, but the Galvin Powell group is responsible for wanting Sam dead for whatever they were fully mixed up in um, led to all of this, which we also know there were two more people but luckily, the alien baby killed him. Granted, not so lucky. Um, the baby ends up spitting out uh, one of the IDs. I think it was outside of patient's borders, too. So it might be in Jessup. Because like, the sign was like, oh, three miles to uh, uh, to patient. So it might be in Jessup. So that might like muddy the waters even more. So... Uh, Darcy's actually the one that came up with the plan of like, okay, I'll drive the guy's car there, you guys dump the body, we'll put it in a pool, we'll make it, and then we'll like call it, up, and you know, he'll eventually get discovered. Which I love that Judy's the one working at the motel. I wondered that, she had, to, like, Darcy had to have already known that, and it's like, that's probably why she was like, well, also there's no security camera, so they kind of benefited from that. But I love Judy's recording a, um, uh, an audible, like a, you know, a book, and it's just like, I love, uh, Darcy being like, oh, you're still recording. She's like, ah, oh, that's fine. And it just kept giving her the devil. She's like, you might want to slow down a little bit. It's like, oh, there's a bathroom nearby, right? She's like, yeah, why? It's like, no, no, don't worry about it. Just keep going, keep going. So, but obviously, and I love the the how they handle this episode, too, in the regard of both. It's not just Asta that's kind of freaking out about things. So is Harry. Both of them are trying to deal with everything that they were dealing with. The fact is, Asta uh, is dealing with the fact that she killed a guy. Regardless of it being self-defense, she still killed someone, you know, and it, she probably never, you know, taking a life, no matter what the circumstances is, it's gonna weigh on you, and, but Harry's on the other side, where he's, because Asa said the interesting thing of, like, if the bullet had gone, like, a little lower, it would have shot his heart, and he would have died, and she's like, wait, would you have died, or would you turn back into an alien? He's like, I would have died before I turned back into an alien, because his entire, like, anatomy is that of a human, like, um, See, he is pretty much a human. Yes, he has a superhuman strength, but his anatomy, his biology is that of a human, so he would have died. Oh, he would have been fine if he had reverted back to his human, like, state, because then everything inside, like, you know, who knows how, 100% of how their um, anatomy and their biology works, you know, in comparison to a human. So it seems like the shot, would he would have survived, because maybe that's not where his heart would have been, type of situation. But either way. He would have died, and he's wrestling with that. He's like, oh, I'm just going to pretend like it does. You know, oh, I'm, as long as I pretend, it's fine. It doesn't matter. So he's tossing away the bullet. Like, haha, as long as the bullet's no longer here, I didn't die, and I'm not going to die. And he's dealing with a patient who is, like, you know, dying. And he's like, oh, I'm going to miss your bedside manner when I'm going. He's like, you will miss nothing because you will be dead. I also think it's super cute, the whole Judy and... um uh, Mike situation, because, like, he's kind of pushing her away, but she's kind of, like, leaning into the whole thing of, like, oh, like, she's saying, like, yeah, it's a motel where two people can disappear into a room and kind of do anything, you know? 
Um, I she's so cute, and she's like, oh, here, I, I I'm doing this auto, uh, I'm doing this like audible thing for this, and he's like. The autobiography of Malcolm X. And then Love's like, oh, Judy. She's like, wait, that's Malcolm X? I thought it was Malcolm 10. Like, you know, Roman numeral, so I thought it was a 10. I, I could do that over again. I was like, Judy, you pure, pure soul, you. I love you so much, Judy. Especially later when Harry's, like, recreating the crime scene. And she's getting super dramatic with it and falls in the pool. It's like, you don't have to do that. That's You're literally in human soup. I told her not to, I literally told her not to do that. And then the next thing they turn around, she's butt naked in the hot tub. She's like, oh, this stinks. It's like, what are you doing? Oh, Judy, I love you so much. Oh, uh, I hope we get more and more Judy as the season progresses. I, oh, dude. But ultimately, um, with his idea and everything, they do find out that he is one of the names on that Sam had written down from the Galvin Powell crew. And obviously, them bouncing off their, their theories and stuff like that. And I love that uh, Mike is ripping into the guys, like, seeing all this awful shit. And then, like, Liv is like, oh, don't worry, I swear all the time, too. It's like, yeah, this uh, shit asshole guy. And he's, Mike's like, yeah, you, Deputy, you took the words right out of my mouth. Um, and it's like... Liv is also too pure for this world, just because, like, she probably doesn't swear that often. Um, she does, like, contact the alien tractor, which, if I remember correctly, that is Terry O'Quinn's character from, um, season one. I think it's that guy, right? So, that'd be interesting if we, I, I think, if I remember correctly, I think that is the person she's talking to. Well, sad, she sent him a video, but... Which I love that whole thing of like, wait, didn't I tell you to do this on your free time? She's like, well, this is a bathroom break, so I figured this would be my free time. And Mike's like, huh, I actually like, that logic makes sense. But he's like, but because of that, because you are taking their bathroom break now, when you actually do finally take your bathroom break later, you're going to have to like do it doubly fast, right? And she's like, yes, that tracks and makes sense. So I'm like... I love their relationship, especially because he's like, yo, because he's thinking like the murder weapon is like, oh, the, there's no gun here. It's like, oh, maybe it was like an icicle thing where they stabbed them and then the ice melted. I'm like, that's a very creative murder. But she's like, no, this is honestly, he looks like he was shot. It's like, or it could have been an ice gun and the killer had to be like a, a monk or something, had to keep their body chipper to a certain level so that the gun wouldn't melt. She's like, or the killer, or the killer took the gun with him. And he's like, see, deputy, that's thinking inside the box. That's why we were. I think outside the box, you think inside the box. He's like, Sure thanks, sir. And I'm like, yeah. I also love they got introduced to as a Detective Torres, which, if I'm not mistaken, just, is that the same, I believe that's the same actress, I could be mistaken. Uh, she was in The Republic of Sarah, and at, most recently, I think, I believe it's her, the actress who played um, Elena and um, The Boys, who, she made a small reappearance, so I was like, hey, that's cool. Um, once again, just interesting, um, once again, comic book properties and stuff, but... Uh, I love that whole thing of like, he introduced himself and then he said, I was like, oh, I was like, because I was thinking in my head, like, oh, he hasn't done the big black thing in a while. I guess we're done with that. No. Nope. He's like, oh, I'm bit black. She's like, well, then I'm medium brown. And he was almost like caught off guard by that. And Liv is like, I'm white. I'm like, oh, <laughs> Liv. Uh, the fact is, I, I'm like, immediately I'm like, dude. This is going to become a thing, isn't it? Because, like, she's going to be, like... Like, obviously, they're, they're, I'm, that's got to be set up for, like, that becoming a thing. Which, it's probably going to hurt Judy. Because, like, I, le Judy legitimately, I think, likes uh, Mike. And I'm curious to see what ends up happening on that front. But, obviously, like, he kind of keeps people at a distance and stuff like that. But, you know, someone who's also in, on the job and probably... She's probably a lot more like him. Um, so, I'm curious to see if... Um, well, what ends up happening, but it feels like they might be setting that up. The fact that she had that on lock, oh, then call me medium brown. Like, the fact that she had that ready means, like, yo, those two are, and especially because they're going to be working together because of this whole investigation, because the, I understand where Ben was coming from, because it's like, yeah, there's, he's already trying to gain patience back its reputation, because he doesn't want to lean into the murder stuff like everyone else does, but, because he wants their town to be, like, the safest place in, in, in the world, and the greatest place, the smallest town, the cutest town, but he doesn't want to, um, keep that reputation, so he called in the murder and said it was, because technically, because of the borderlines, it does technically fall on Jessup property, so, but thanks to Harry manipulating the crime scene and getting the evidence there, he's able to make it a patient's murder again, and he went back to being the doctor of the town just so that he can mess with the evidence, um, and then there's also, like, the whole, um, uh, 
thing of Ben and Kate uh, going through therapy, and it's like, uh, that's going to be interesting. That relationship is so complicated. Uh, you actually kind of feel bad. Well, I, I, cause I think Ben's the non-confrontational type. I think that's just kind of in, in him, which I get it. It's like, yeah, rather than kind of dealing with a lot of issues, it's kind of almost like this, you know, he's kind of like the more submissive personality in a relationship and she's the more dominant one. So when she said, like, he's been harboring a lot of stuff cause he was opening up the hair. He's like, yeah, this guy said, like, I had a Superman like jawline. I'm like, Hey, I can see you being like a, a Clark Kent slash uh, Superman character. I, I, I can see him playing, I say character, geez. Like, I can see you playing Superman. I think you got, I think you have that look. Um, but the fact is that he was like, yeah, someone offered me a modeling job. And Kate just said, cool. Because he feels like what I want and what I like is, you know, she's not a fan of. And he has to, like, I mean, I think that's something in him that he has to work on. That's definitely a him thing. But also, like, the fact is that he doesn't feel the need to open up to Kate, like that he's kind of scared to. Like maybe that makes speaks volumes about her too. It's definitely gonna be interesting to see where that goes. But that uh, and now Harry has to deal with not only Ben showing up, but now he's gonna have to. I wonder is Kate gonna want to? Well, she wants it to be a couples therapy thing, so it probably won't be a thing of her like getting solo therapy with him, you know. But it could be a thing of maybe. Um, Harry decides to like, right, maybe it would, or maybe they decide like, oh, maybe we should also do uh, individual stuff as well. Because she heard all the stuff that Ben complained about, especially about her dry um, salmon. It's like, how do you, he's like, how do you mess up salmon? It's like, all you have to do is put it in a, under a flashlight and it's done. What was it? Oh, what? it makes me think of like, he's like, wait, are you in here recording something for like Instagram? He's like. Uh, he's like, yeah, you should do better uh, lighting, and it works better for your skin. And call it, you know, get you a flashlight. She's like, that's not what that's called, sir. And Darcy, uh, it is interesting the timing for her. Uh, once again, she's not letting the whole covering up a crime scene slow her down uh, because she goes on her date finally uh, and Dan kind of goes like yeah this guy was waiting for you for like three hours it's like wait what and he was almost like oh god and she apologizes for um, making him wait but she also and obviously we know what upset her that episode was like her encounter with her parents like they have a way of making her feel bad about being who she is it's like they can't just accept her as she is it's like yeah there's a lot of stuff of like yeah she has this potential she was on her way with her olympic career and stuff like that but they can't just be okay as who she is now that you know can't even because they're always so quick to be like oh like well blah 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 blah. they're always like well what about the next chapter in your life like oh you should kind of get back in the swing of things it's just it makes her feel like and as she kind of says when she's talking, like, oh, like, I'm not good enough. Like, I'm not someone that deserves nice things. And that's, that's the most heartbreaking thing. It's like, no, you deserve the world, Darcy. You're awesome. You know? Because, you know, Darcy's got a lot of issues that she's kind of dealing with. Um, Asta wanting to confess to live, but she sees her dad and she's reminded by what Harry said. Like, right, you, they find out they will kill you, not only you, but they will also kill everyone you care about. So... It's like, it makes it hard, because the only people she can talk to about it are Darcy and Harry. And even during the autopsy, it was all kind of being, like, she was being reminded about it. I'm sure it helps Harry, because it's like, oh, the guy that tried to kill me is like, well, you're the one that's dead, so, you know. But for Asta, it's like, no, this is the guy I killed. No matter what the circumstances would have been, I, uh, I, uh, I, I can't. And she can't get it out of her head, and Harry's trying to make her just forget about it, so... It's like, not just be like, right, don't focus on it, but it's like, right, she's in so much pain that he's feeling it because he does legitimately care about Asta, so he plans to wipe her memory of that night to give her good memories. The problem is, by altering her memories, sadly, she's supposed to go out with Jay, you know, and now it's like, dude, she's probably going to end up forgetting about that, and that's going to, like, cause things to get bad between her and Jay. It's like... Especially because Jay's going to be like, oh, you didn't show up and she's not going to remember that. She told Darcy about it. So that's going to be an interesting thing. Like, what is Harry going to do on that front? Is he going to, like, Darcy's obviously going to remember everything. Or maybe Harry's going to say, like, oh, Asta's brain is blocking the trauma so we shouldn't tell her about it or or what? You know, that's what I'm, I'm curious about. Because Darcy's going to bring it up and Asta's going to be like, what are you talking about? She's probably going to be upset with Harry for changing her memories because of all the fallout that's going to happen between her and Jay, which is going to be heartbreaking. But, you know, I think on some level she'll appreciate it. But at the same time, it's like, right. Because he didn't know about, like, all that would come about all by altering her memories. But obviously, she's like, how do I, like, she wasn't going to go be able to make it through that. But, because no matter, like, how who she talked to, like... Because there's only two people she can talk to about it. You know, it's just her, um, 
just those two, and it's like, that's not enough, like, she would have probably need, she would need professional help to kind of deal with that, you know, once again, Darcy's in a position of, like, yeah, I can cover up the crime scene, I don't have to live with the fact that I killed a guy, but I did, like, you know, cover up a crime scene, once again, she handled it with such grace, and just like, alright, this is what we gotta do, so, um, it's definitely gonna be interesting to see, you know, once again, the ramifications of, um, Harry messing with, um, her memories like that, um, because you know that's going to complicate things between Asta and her um, and uh, Jay's biological mom because her biological mom wanted things to kind of be. It's like right, uh, let uh, let Jay come to you. Don't come to Jay. Like it's just like because she doesn't want her daughter to get hurt, right? And now like it's like oh this will probably have a trickle down the road of like oh you hurt uh, Jay. Like maybe you shouldn't be in her life and it'll complicate things. So what's good? I could definitely see her ending up. And she has every right to kind of be mad at. Harry, yes, he might have been trying to do the right thing, but he bumbled it, you know, and he had no idea he was bumbling us. So that's going to be interesting to see. Um, obviously, uh, because they are working together, like I said, we are going to be seeing a lot more Detective Torres when it comes to this investigation, which is going to be interesting. Once again, there is stuff, like I said, I believe that's going to be on the um, Jessup side of things, that ID that the baby, like, threw up. So, and there's also the thing that, Harry hasn't told her about, like, oh yeah, there's an even alien, evil alien race here to take over Earth, but it's kind of not the best time to tell Asta about that, considering everything that's going on. Um, the fact is that she's dealing with the fact that she's murdered someone, plus it's like, this is all connected to Sam's murder. Like, how much of that, I mean, he's altering the night, so she doesn't remember she murdered a guy, but how much of that, like, what memories is he implanting there? And also, what... Well, I'm assuming that's the only part of it he would change, but maybe not. Like, maybe that entire night is getting shifted, uh, and obviously, like, the entire night is just going to be something completely different. Maybe that's all it is. So, because that, once again, that would make sense in turn if it's um, changing her, her memories and making her forget about the whole her and Jay is supposed to meet up thing, so... On the other side of things, too, we have the General and David. He's still alive. I was like, oh! Apparently, the orb kept him alive, which I thought was kind of interesting that it didn't disintegrate after the fact. And in fact, I guess it was something small enough that as long as it's not being used on such a massive level, like, I guess a little bit of energy here and there, like, makes it... Because anytime Harry's done something that, I guess, that uses a lot of energy, the ball, like, disappears afterwards. Like, it, he uses it up, but I guess, like, healing from a bullet wound was enough to just keep... Uh, David alive, which the general is like, oh, she believes there's a mole in her organization. She's like, so lucky that you're not a uh, mole, but you have to explain to me why you had this ball and you didn't tell me. And it's like, wait, I found it after I drugged your food. She, he's like, wait, you drugged my food? She's like, yes, but we both have a common enemy. He's like, well, how do I know you're not going to, that this food you brought me isn't drugs? She's like, you don't know. You know, we can't trust each other. So it's like, oh, and I, I love like, Linda Hamilton is his character. I'm like, she looks so unhinged and crazy that just like oh like i drugged you it was like why would you drug me it's like yeah you know he's the one person that isn't possibly the mole so the guy that shot him we know is an alien so that is interesting that potentially well that that guy could be working with an alien that's in her organization um you know and you know in the government so like who knows who how well because once again there's a lot of history here uh, because of the ship she saw, like, 50 years ago. Obviously, Liv saw a ship when she was younger, too. I'm forgetting which one, because the one that came 50 years ago, because once again, the one that came 50 years ago and the one Liv saw were different ones. I think the one Liv saw might have been Goliath. I don't think the one, I don't think the one, um, the general saw was Goliath. I think that might be the invading alien race, potentially. So, because the two ships were different, like, one was green, and one was yellow. It might be vice versa because the one that... I think the one that she saw might have been Goliath. I, I forgot when he came. Because I know he landed in like Brazil, Goliath did. I believe. Um, and took on a human form. But like the one she saw was like yellowish, I think. So I believe that's probably like the invading alien. So I think it's flipped. Either way, it's been a while since I saw the first half of the season, obviously. I am just so, so excited to have Resident Alien back, and I'm so excited to see where uh, the second half of this season takes us. Uh, it's going to be a wild trip. I've avoided watching any of the trailers, so I don't even know what to even 
even remotely expect going forward. And I don't want to know. I just wanted to kind of take everything. I was like, all I needed to know was the date that it was coming back, and I was good. And that's all I need, and I'm excited to see uh, where all of this ultimately ends up taking us going forward. I'm also curious, like, will Harry, when will Terry tell Asta? Probably not any relative time soon, because you probably got to try and track down the baby first, but... That's going complications upon complications upon complications. So we'll have to wait and see what happens next. But uh, really, that's all I'm going to talk about. So the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and good.